Okay, we're going to talk about 2D and 3D documentation of artwork as well as, you know, just 3D still life um, lighting. So we're going to get started with 2D and I've got a picture here. I'm going to show you a little bit more about it in a moment. So this is my studio setup. Um, I've got two big kind of fluorescent daylight bounce lights on stands. I've got a camera tripod set up and I've got my artwork. So a couple things to notice about, um, to know about 2D documentation. So, so first is it's really difficult to work behind glass due to some reflections or glare that you can have. So if your work's framed, really the best option is to unframe it. Um, you can use, you can try complex um, cross polarization filter setups where you put uh, polarized filters over the lights and another one over the camera lens. Um, and that really does help, but it, you have to have the setup on uh, number one. And then number two, it doesn't always get rid of every reflection, but it is very helpful. Um, but the best thing would be to just take it out of the, out of the glazing, um, out of the frame, so you can just see, you can see the artwork. So here I've got an artwork, it's just up on a wall. Um, I'll be taking a picture of it, and my wall's not perfect, so I'll have to do some touch up. Um, but, um, another option is to use a copy stand, which we do have at Heron. Um, if it's a 16 by 20 inch image or smaller, that's probably the best thing um, to use. And then um, one of the things to notice about this lighting setup is, is that I've, I've kind of been photographing it so it's like I have the light set up at about a 45 degree angle from each side. So if this is straight on, and the wall is 90 degrees, right halfway in between would be 45. So I've got one light coming in this side and then another light coming in from this side. And that's really um, set up. Another thing to notice here is that I've got the lights up pretty high. And one of the reasons I did that is to avoid any glare on the surface of, in this case, the photograph. So I wanna show you something that um, right now, if you look at this image, it's pretty good, right? But you notice if I start coming down here, you can see the glare at the top of the image coming down, right? You can see that. But as I move up higher, it kind of goes away. Okay, so that's one of the reasons why you have to move the lights around. If I had the lights lower, then the angle of reflection of the light was going to be hitting that. And if I come, like for example, if I come too far over here, you can, again, and low, you can see that. So. One of the reasons that that light is up so high is so I can stand up and be at normal height taking this picture from straight on and I'm not getting any glare. And then on this side, you know, I've got my camera set up. Um, you could use an iPhone, you can use a fancy camera, uh, DSLR, whatever you want. But what's really important is that I got a tripod, okay? We want to, and we, the other things that we want to think about is on our cameras, we want to use a low ISO when we're taking the picture. Um, and that means that we're probably likely in here to have a longer exposure time. Um, you can see here, I've got my ISO set to 400. Um, I want a pretty high aperture if I can get away with it. Um, this is a really flat artwork though. So whatever you know that your uh, f-stop, your camera will use that makes it really sharp, um, that's really what you want. And so here you can see I kind of have my image uh, or my artwork framed nicely here. Um, and notice I, I'm really trying to do my best to keep things um, really even. Um, I don't want to be, I don't want to have my camera at like an angle, you know, I don't, I don't want the camera to be like angling down, right? Um, or angling up. I really want this camera to be level and straight on. And likewise from the side, I really want this to be centered want that lens to be centered as much as possible. Um, it doesn't look like I've got it perfect here, but I'm pretty darn close. All of those things are gonna help keep that image square uh, when you take the picture of it in the camera. It's good to use it like a lens that's gonna be maybe slightly tele, it could be slightly telephoto to slightly wide. You don't want really extremes in either case, although telephoto would probably work out okay, but extremely wide angle is gonna skew your image and, and um, because of barrel distortion. So you wanna to try to avoid that. And then you also, you should be shooting, think like an archivist, shoot at your maximum resolution your camera offers and um, shoot in raw format so you can 
do as good of a job as you can. And then when we're thinking about exposure, you want to be careful, right, that you check the exposure. So right now, like on this cam on this one, I've got a picture and um, uh, of course we it's, it's in focus. You want to make sure you're doing good focus, but it looks like it's all lined up. I'm just going to take the picture at f11 and 40th of a second. So I'm going to take that picture and then I'm going to get the image and one of the things you want would like to do is you really want to look at the image and see if 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 you like the way it's going to look sorry if you if you look and, and get into the details make sure you've got good focus um, this this camera I can kind of move around and look look close up right and so it's looking pretty good to me uh, in that regard but I also want to make sure that I think the focus the overall exposure is good am I getting enough detail in my um, in my darks and in my highlights. If I'm not sure, you know, I may want to take another picture and like say slightly increase the exposure, like here, a third of a stop. Um, take another one. I'd rather get, get more than what I need now than less than what I need uh, so that when I'm, when I'm looking uh, later on, uh, I'm not gonna have any trouble um, getting a good picture out of this. Yeah, so. And really, that's the name of the game. Um, you could come in, you could do different pictures, you know, if you had multiple shots now that have the lighting all set up here. Um, also remember white balance. Right now, I've got it on auto white balance, and it looks like it's doing a, 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 a quite a good job. But if you, you may want to double check that. If you don't think so, you could also, these are daylight balance. They're fluorescent lights, but they're daylight balance. And so I could, um, I could also try daylight balance and see how that operates. Uh, luckily, I'm shooting in RAW, so it'd be also easy to do some fine tuning of that once I get into my software.